Today, I want to tell you about my new favorite word. And I know this sounds a little bit like a Mr. Rogers episode, but I promise you it's not. My new favorite word is de-prescribing. And I want it to become your new favorite word, but more importantly, your doctor's new favorite word. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and I want to explain my enthusiasm about this word de-prescribing. So first of all, it's probably not a new word. It's probably been around forever, but from the medical community, the medical teaching, it is a very new word. Going back 25 plus years when I started this journey with med school and residency and fellowship and eventually into my cardiology practice, I never once heard the word de-prescription, especially when it comes to type 2 diabetes medications or blood pressure medications. It just wasn't sort of a focus that getting people off medications was a good goal or an achievable goal. Chronic medical conditions were thought of exactly as that, chronic that we treat you with medications and probably we'll have to increase the dose over time. And the goal is just to limit complications and manage things as much as possible. But over the past, I don't know, five years or so, this concept of de-prescription has really started to become a much more prominent word in, in medical lexicon, especially within the low carb community. And I'll explain why in a little bit. But this is why I want to talk about de-prescription because getting off of medications absolutely is achievable and is a fantastic goal. I mean, look, medications cost money. All medications have potential side effects. So if you can safely get off your medications or reduce your doses of your medications while still improving the outcomes of your medical condition, especially type 2 diabetes, that is a huge victory. And this is something that should be the goal of every physician taking care of someone with type 2 diabetes and every patient who has type 2 diabetes. So the timing of this is very good because just recently, Dr. Mark Kukazella and colleagues published a paper in Frontiers in Nutrition called Adapting Medication for Type 2 Diabetes to a Low-Carbohydrate Diet. And this is really important. I mean, at Diet Doctor, we have a guide called Adjusting Medications on a Low-Carb Diet. And it's got tons of information directed at clinicians to teach clinicians how to safely evaluate a patient and reduce medications and de-prescribe. But now we've got something published in the literature, which is really powerful because that's what doctors and scientists and clinicians are really going to take note of. Like, how do I know that this is safe? How do I know that this is can be mainstream? Well, it's published in a peer-reviewed journal. So that's a really important step. So hats off to Dr. Kukazella and his colleagues. They have this really cool green light, yellow light, red light little guidance. So green light the biguanides, which is basically metformin, the GLP-1 agonists, and the DPP-4 inhibitors. Those are medications that don't significantly lower blood sugar and increase the risk of hypoglycemia. They can help prevent the blood sugar from going too high, but they don't actively reduce the blood sugar. And that's the key. When you are on a low-carb diet, so we're really talking about when starting a low-carb diet, low-carb diets are so effective at reducing blood sugar that they can become the victim of their own success and cause cause low blood sugar if you're taking other medications that also lower your blood sugar. And that's, I mean, one that just shows the power of low-carb diets for treating type 2 diabetes, putting them into remission, uh, controlling them, because if you're taking diabetes medications that lower your blood sugar and you start a low-carb diet at the same time, you are at significant risk of your blood sugar becoming dangerously low. So you have to know which drugs to talk to your doctor about. You should never make changes on your medications on your own. This is only general guidance, so you know to talk to your doctor about it. And so you can direct your doctor to our guide or to this paper so that they can learn more about it. But generally, the green light ones that are considered safe are the metformins, the GLP-1 agonists, and the DPP-4 inhibitors. The ones that are most dangerous, now these are the most important ones to consider, are the short-acting insulins, because those are the ones that you take with your meals. But if your meals no longer have many carbohydrates and your blood sugar isn't rising as much with your meals, you don't want to take those anymore in general. Um, any combination insulin, which is usually like the 70-30 insulin, which has some of that short-acting insulin, again, those are need to be very cautious with. And the sulfonylureas, because those are medications that significantly lower your blood sugar. And on a low-carb diet, that can increase your risk of very low, dangerous, low blood sugars. And then the SGLT2 inhibitors, which are sort of like the new kid on the block, which everybody's so thrilled about because there's good outcome data. One of the few medications that actually has good outcome data um, for 
cardiovascular events for all-cause mortality with more aggressive medications. And so that's interesting. The other drugs, insulin, sulfonylureas, don't have those, right? You may lower your blood sugar, but you don't necessarily improve how long people live or reduce the risk of heart disease by treating them more aggressively, interestingly. But SGLT2 inhibitors do have that evidence, but there's also a number of anecdotal reports of the risk of ketoacidosis, a very dangerous life-threatening condition for people who are taking SGLT2 inhibitors and following a strict low-carbohydrate diet. So that's why that's on the red list. So those are the medications you want to talk to your doctor about right away before starting a low-carb diet to make sure you don't get into trouble. Then there's what they call the the yellow, which is the reduced category, and that's the longer-acting insulin. The long-acting insulin you, you usually take in the morning and it kind of lasts all day, that's the one that you're going to want to reduce, but not necessarily stop right away. Now, again, this is general guidance for you to discuss with your doctor, or if you are a clinician, I want you to look at this and learn about this and read our guide about this. There are other things to consider though, right? The primary importance is making sure your blood sugar does not go too low. Then secondary things though are, what is your carb reduction like? Are you going from 400 grams of carbs per day to 20 grams of carbs per day? All right, you're going to see a huge swing in your blood sugar coming down. Or are you going from 150 carbs a day to 50 carbs a day? That's going to be much less of a swing, right? So you would maybe not need to reduce your medications um, quite as much, but you would need to reduce them a lot more for the bigger uh, swings. The other is what is your starting blood sugar, right? So the, the tighter your blood sugar control at baseline, the better, but the worse your blood sugar control, okay, then maybe you're going to need to reduce your medications a little bit less because your blood sugar control is already out of control. So these are things for you clinicians out there to think about because it's not sort of one size fits all, but these are general guidelines for you to think about. And the other is sort of age if they're older or frailty. I mean, age is just sort of used as a surrogate for frailty, but if falling, you know, hypoglycemia and falling is gonna mean breaking a hip, and severe complications, right? You're gonna be a little more cautious about how you adjust your medications there and, and probably reduce a little bit more aggressively to prevent that hypoglycemia. Now, the risk may be blood sugar goes up at least temporarily. And generally that's thought of as less of a concern because it's not acutely dangerous, right? The low blood sugar is the acutely dangerous one. The blood sugar that kind of trends up over a couple of days or weeks uh, is a little less of a concern as long as you can get it back in control. So I direct you, whether you're a clinician or a patient, to our guide. If you are a patient, please share it with your clinician. We want more doctors understanding this concept so that they too can have a new favorite word, de-prescription. All right. Um, also, you can let your doctor know about our DD Pro program. Uh, it's specifically for healthcare professionals. It can be doctor, health coaches, nutritionists, personal trainers, anybody involved in helping other people get healthier. We want to provide uh, the support and the information and the content, uh, the meal plans, the shopping lists, um, the health related content all that content that they need to help them succeed and help you as a, as a, as a patient or a client succeed. Um, so if you're a clinician, check it out, dietdoctor.com slash ddpro. If you're a patient, please let your clinicians know about it. Direct them to our guide. Direct them to Dr. Kukazella's um, publication, which is really going to help spread this message of my new favorite word, and hopefully yours too, D prescription. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Mm -hmm.